a large model showman's engine, part 60, working on the steam water pump, making the special fitting to combine the two water outlets into one. In order to do this, I'm going to make a special fitting. I found this small piece of brass bar in my scrap box, which is ideal for the job. Without further ado, it's over to my Boxford lathe, and I've roughly faced across the front, and now I'm machining down the side of the piece. The finish across the front is unimportant, and you'll see why later on in the video. I need to reduce the diameter of part of this brass bar down to 3 eighths of an inch. I'm checking frequently with the micrometer to make sure that it's right, because it needs to be definitely 3 eighths of an inch, as I'm going to thread it 3 eighths by 32 threads per inch. The machining tolerance on a lot of the parts I make does not need to be very accurate. But then again, in certain areas, it does need to be accurate. So I'm frequently checking with the micrometer until I get it just right. The next part of the job is to make a deep centre in the end of the work to accept the union cone. And for this job, I'm using quite a large centre drill. Now it's time to thread the end to accept a 3 8 by 32 union nut. I have three tailstock die holders, all fitted with very popular die sizes. Then all my other dies are pre-fitted into these holders. I threaded the part manually, as you've just seen, but to speed up the job, when I removed the die holder, I wound it off under power. Here's a clip showing me threading the part again, just to point out that to keep the die accurate, I'm using the tailstock chuck, and believe me, it really works. The commercial union nut is a perfect fit on the thread. In this clip I'm trimming the end, which explains why I didn't need to get a good finish in the first place. In this clip I'm chamfering the end of the fitting so it's not sharp. There's one very important job left to do in the lathe, and that is to drill down the centre of this, but not all the way through the other end. Before drilling the hole like this, it's a good idea to know how far you're going to drill, and the easiest way to find out is to measure the work, that's the piece in the chuck, and then, once you know how deep the hole needs to be, you can mark the position on the twist drill using a felt tip pen. Then there's no danger of the twist drill coming through the other side. After drilling the hole, I turned the work round, faced across the front of it, and chamfered it like the other end. In this clip, I'm holding the part in position against the pump. Then once again, using a felt tip marker, I mark the position of the centres of the two water outlets. And now it's over to the drilling machine. I need to drill two 3 sixteenths of an inch holes in the top of this piece of bar. First of all, I sight up the end of the drill bit at the end of the work. This tells my calibrated eye that it's in the center. And then I just gently tap the top of the piece, very gently with the point of the drill bit. This makes a small center mark so the drill doesn't wander when I start drilling it properly. There are more scientific ways to do this, by using a wiggler or wobbler on each side of the vice jaws to find the centre accurately, and then drilling the hole initially with a centre drill, but I'm not going to do that in this case. I talk about the calibrated eye a lot. How do you get a calibrated eye? Well, you practice. Practice makes perfect. The more you do something, the better you get at it, and I can think of one or two more instances in life that that can be applied to. The next part of the job involves bending some copper piping, and here they are, cleaned up and in position, ready to take into the outer part of the workshop to do this. I've shown silver soldering operations in quite a lot of my videos, and if you really want to watch it from the start, please watch Silver Soldering for Beginners. Silver soldering is not difficult. There are three criteria that have to be satisfied. The parts need to be clean, the flux needs to be the right type, and you need sufficient heat to make the flux work. How do you know when you have sufficient heat to melt the silver solder? All you have to do is watch the flux and when it takes on a watery appearance, touch the silver solder stick on the joint. Keep the heat on for a bit longer after that to consolidate the joint and then leave it to cool to black. You need to quench the part in water so that the thermal shock initially removes some of the oxidisation. Never plunge a red hot silver soldered part into the water because that will destroy the silver soldered joint. Here's a good tip, whenever you're working with copper pipe and cutting it, it's a good idea to do this. Use a needle file to just clean the burrs off the inside, and before the next silver soldering operation, clean up the pipes thoroughly. 
I've loosely fitted the union nuts and the union cones in place. But before silver soldering, you need to coat the ends of the pipe with some flux. And now once more in this episode, I'm going to show the silver soldering operation. It's back to the brazing hearth in the outer part of the workshop and I'm doing this wrong on purpose. I applied the silver solder just before the flux was ready. And on this side I applied slightly too much silver solder, but either way the job will be okay. Here I'm about to quench the part as before once it had cooled a bit, and here it is fastened to the pump. Even though the thermal shock of quenching the part in cold water had removed some of the residue, it needs much more of a clean up than this. Because the copper's been heated to red, it's annealed, so it's quite soft and easy to bend. And I find the easiest way to bend it is to use a soft hammer like this. I'm being very careful not to hit the copper piping because this really is very soft at the moment. Once I got the part in the position I wanted it to be in, in between the nuts for a little bit of support, you can now see what I was making and why. This simple fitting combines the twin water outlets into one larger outlet for quarter inch pipe. And when it's cleaned up it should look quite nice. But it's not ready yet, it needs to sit in the acid bath for a while to clean off the rest of the oxidisation and the flux residue. I filled an aerosol cap with some acid from the acid bath and carefully placed the part into that. The acid I use is called Kilrock K Kettle Descaler and it's not very strong so I'll leave this in the acid for about 24 hours. Notice that I left the union nut in place to stop the acid attacking the threads. It won't be long now before I fit this pump to the traction engine and I'm quite looking forward to that, but there are still one or two things to do to make this a simpler job. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.